On the line with us, our buddy Laura, Lori Wallach. Lori is the, uh, the big cheese, the, the executive director of Republic Citizens Global Trade Watch, uh, citizen.org slash trade or tradewatch.org. And uh, you can tweet her at Wallach Lori uh, or at PCGTW. Uh, Lori, welcome back. I'm so glad to have you with us. It's been a while since we've talked. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on uh, the current situation with pharmaceuticals. I, 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 uh, years ago, I bought some, uh, uh, some pharmaceuticals from a, a pharmacy in Canada, and I've been on their mailing list for years now as a result of that. The, 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 the price of the drug that I was taking has dropped somewhat here in the United States, ironically, weirdly. But in any case, um, uh, but I'm still getting their newsletter, and they've been talking about how the supply chains have been badly interrupted, that 95% of the drugs coming into Canada and presumably North America are coming either from India or China. The raw ingredients are being made in China. The pills are being pressed in India. India has shut down because of the coronavirus. China's been holding back. Where are we at with all this stuff, and, and should Americans be concerned about our, our, our drug supply? You know, Tom, you're spot on in that concern because, in a way, one of the pieces of strongest evidence of the failure of the hyper-globalized corporate rigged trade system is that we have very little resilience or redundancy in the supply chain for medicines, for all the PPE. We saw the crisis mm -hmm. with masks, with ventilators. So you are spot on. The U.S. Um, Health and Human Services Department says that we are reliant 90% on imports for masks, 70% for respirators, and that 80% of all of the medicines, including the active pharmaceutical ingredients, the stuff that actually makes the medicines, are coming from either India or China. Wow. Wow. So my recollection is that back in the 60s, um, and I'm, I'm sure you know these numbers better than I do, and I'm doing this from old memory. Uh, but the back sometime in the 60s or in that neighborhood of time, uh, we passed, in order to help out Puerto Rico, we passed some real substantial tax breaks uh, for t particular categories of business. Pharmaceuticals were the largest, where if they located to Puerto Rico, their tax bill went down substantially. And so most of our drugs during the, the period from whenever that happened up until around 2000 were being manufactured down in Puerto Rico. But that at some point, I don't recall if it was the late 90s or the early 2000s, but somewhere in there, um, the free traders got a hold of this. And I don't know if this was partisan or not and said, uh, let's just do away with those tax breaks. They did away with the tax breaks. The factories, the drug factories in Puerto Rico shut down. Puerto Rico was thrown into a depression. Um, the drug manufacturing all went to China and India. And now we're stuck with uh, we can't even get drugs in this hemisphere. Am I remembering that right? You are remembering that right. And that, that tax policy was basically to spur investment in Puerto Rico. And uh, it was eliminated. At the same time, it was sort of a a you know conglomeration of bad things that tax change happened which removed the incentive to produce in puerto rico but also we saw the wto and nafta go into place that gave these crazy guaranteed 20-year monopoly patent plus criminal penalties for their violation in countries around the world so it was suddenly much safer with basically the u.s government insuring these monopoly protections for pharmaceutical outsourcers to go take their formulas and their medicines and make them someplace cheaper. At the same time, as we domestically were generally creating incentives like tax benefits if you outsource, which Bush too did, and now Trump has doubled down where he charges 20% on corporate profits made in the U.S. and 10% on those made overseas. So all the incentives, of exactly the wrong kind of behavior, have us in a situation mm. where we are untenably reliable, reliant on unreliable, super long, brittle, thin supply chains. Where even like you know, the whole ventilator story, everyone has been, everyone who's basically kind of scoffed at the, you know the elite lucky people who didn't lose a job with the five million manufacturing jobs you've lost in the last twenty years of those kind of policies. Why are you guys so worried about trade and where things are made? And suddenly everyone is saying, 
what do you mean we can't make or get <laughs> the basic things we need? We're America. And then you explain, right. like, hey, yeah. guys, we may have invented some of those ventilators, but the corporations, to make the biggest profit, they've got 100 key pieces, most of which are made offshore. So even if you wanted to get, get the manufacturing, the assembly happening, we set up a system where we've outsourced all the pieces, the parts. We're totally, totally vulnerable. So right now, Donald, and, and, and thank you for giving the lie, by the way, to Trump's, I mean, you know, one of his major sales pitches, particularly to the industrial Midwest, is, you know, I'm changing our policies to encourage companies to bring their jobs back here, when in fact his, uh, his replacement for NAFTA cuts taxes, corporate taxes in half if you move your manufacturing to Mexico, um, and, and, as you just pointed out. Um, but uh, COVID-19 is kind of r causing the world to rethink trade. It's coming on the back end of the whole Brexit thing. And, and we've got this very weird relationship between Donald Trump and China uh, where, you know, he's trying to trash China for political purposes, but he's still making his Trump products in China. And, he, I, I, his, you know, his... I, his daughter, I'm assuming, I, I, you know, I don't know what all is going on here, but tell me about this weird relationship between Trump and China. Well, one of the key things to know is it, it, it's hard to know if it is nefarious self-dealing, could be, or if it's incompetence, could be, <laughs> or it's a combination. Because here is a thing, Tom, that like put down if you have hot tea in your hand, you'll want to throw it. In the beginning of January, the trade data shows clearly that China basically stopped exporting the masks, the ventilators, the gloves, the stuff, the medicine were, were very overly, unreasonably, dangerously reliant on. So you can see that in the trade data. And at the same time, the Trump Commerce Department, in trying to prove the point that Trump's trade with China has been like a great, and luckily Congressman Lloyd Doggett caught one of these commerce alerts to a company was sent to him, and it's showing them trying to basically outsource the stuff that we need in the crisis as the imports that Reliant on are no longer coming in. So if you go to our website, which is tradewatch.org, that's tradewatch.org, we have a whole new special feature on exactly what you said, which is how the COVID crisis is laying bare the structural disaster of globalization that many Americans and working people in developed countries and many people in developing countries understood but that now is being laid bare for all of us trying to get through this crisis. And one of the things we did is we went back and ran the data that shows this kind of nefarious, you know, strange duplicity with China, where you can see, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, we use the public data. You can see our exports are falling off of all these things we obviously are going to need in our country at the same time that so we're pushing out the door to China, exports of the same things that we don't make enough of to start so that is, that is just an example. I mean, again, people have said, do you think that was some kind of weird self-dealing thing, or do you think that was just stupidity? And I said, why do we have to make a choice? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, you're, what you're talking about is Trump shipping um, millions of pounds or tons or whatever it was of uh, PPE to China in January, right? And February and March. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Lori Wallach, you can read all about it at tradewatch.org, the executive director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. Lori, I always learn something from you. Thanks so much for dropping by today. It's great talking with you.